So guys, welcome back to another video, and this is another oversimplified reaction, and this one is World War One Part One. I think it's two parts to this series. This is a shorter video than he usually does. I assume this is like the early days of his channel, but people have been suggesting this World War Two and the Cold War as reactions to do, and um, people are also saying react to this one first, then World War Two, then the Cold War in that order because say I react to the Cold War and then I've missed things from the other wars that may be important for that one. So I, I make, that makes sense. So I'm going to probably do this one, then part two, then World War Two, World War, World War Two, part one, part two, then the Cold War, part one, part two. And yeah, but thank you guys for all the support on these videos. I'm mind blown, to be honest. I don't really understand how these videos have just blown like they have, but people seem to be loving these. And yeah, I mean, you're suggesting a lot of new things and I'm going to get to them. There's a lot of suggestions, so I apologise if it takes a few days few weeks maybe longer to get them because there's so many videos i want to do but i do want to thank you guys because you're opening my eyes to a lot of things again that i'm not too familiar with and it's it's cool to learn about the history of the world and yeah man i mean i'm gonna t i'm gonna look into this one and see what happens in this one again it's a bit of a short one so i apologize for this video being a bit shorter but let's check this out anyway the world of 1914 a time of modern technology culture and fashion Truly the height of civilization. <laughs> Let's have sake. a war. Everyone knew Let's a big war was coming. France wanted some stuff back to Germany. Europe starting what they always do. It's always Europe starting these wars. I mean, I say that in recent history it more is, but it's just like, man, why? <laughs> Germany had taken from it. Germany wanted to take more of everyone's stuff. Oh, and wow. They were building a big sexy navy that was making the British uncomfortable. <laughs> These two empires thought they were really cool, but lots of different people who lived there didn't think it was so cool. And some of them had even been declaring independence with help from Russia. Everyone was talking about each other behind each other's backs, throwing the fact that military technology had come a long way since the last major war, and suddenly everyone was pretty eager to beat each other up. In this area of Austria-Hungary live some Serbs and Bosnians who hated living in Austria-Hungary. So the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand goes there for a nice drive in an open-top car with his car's route published in advance. And that went just about as well as you'd expect. Some assassins oh, wow. were waiting for him along the way and threw bombs at his car. But they missed Jesus. and blew up some officers behind him instead. Wait, they missed? So they didn't actually kill him initially? Wait, what? So the Archduke goes into hiding, <laughs> leaves Sarajevo, and the whole war never happens. Except no, the Archduke doesn't leave, but instead goes back out in the open top car oh to visit the injured God. officers in hospital. The driver takes a wrong turn and by sheer coincidence gets stuck beside one of the failed assassins. Who shoots him? <laughs> Austria oh, is understandably pissed about all this, and they think the Serbian government had something to do with it, which they might have. So they go to their ally Germany and say, Hey Germany, we're going to declare war in Serbia. And Germany is all for that. So Austria-Hungary send a big list of impossible demands to Serbia. And when Serbia refuses, they declare war. What? So that's what actually initiated Austria, it. Austria-Hungary and Germany are friends. And Serbia is protected by Russia, who's friends with France. So they all declare war on each other. Montenegro joins in too. France and Britain also have a kind of alliance. So when France says, Hey Britain, you got my back? Britain is like... Maybe. And then they decide to stay out of it, which is great for Germany, because Germany has a plan. They know that Russia is so big and clumsy that it will take them a while to get ready for war. So with this guy in charge, Germany will send all its troops into France at lightning speed while Russia's getting ready, defeat France, then move all the troops to Russia and defeat Russia, and then we all speak German and eat Pfeffer Potast every day. Just one problem. France has loads of forts and defenses along its German oh, wow. border, so and Germany can't waste any time fighting them, so Germany decides to go around them, through Belgium. Belgium is neutral, but Germany wants to march 750,000 troops through it to get around France's Jesus. defenses. They're hoping Belgium will just kind of sit down and shut up, but they don't. They fight back, and they're pretty good too, so they slow the Germans down. What's worse is that Britain shows up, and they're pretty pissed that Germany's invading neutral countries. So now Britain declares war in Germany. So that's what got us involved in, jeez. And commit some atrocities along the way. They also wear spikes and sometimes skulls on their uniform. So if you're trying to not look like the bad guys, good job. <laughs> the Allies have a propaganda extravaganza, and this starts having an influence around oh the world, notably in America. The US President Woodrow Wilson sees himself as a bit of a Jesus figure, and spends most of the war trying to get everyone to just hug it out. But there's also a large oh, population wow. of ethnic Germans living in the United States. That's true, isn't there? There's a lot. I knew, I found that out. It's a random fact, but there is a lot of like Germans 
and like Irish people in the US, isn't there? I mean, I don't know why that's popped to my mind because he said that, but I just it is, it is true because they're probably like some of them are probably siding with Germany at this point. So it must have been hard. Out, they were like, "Yay, Germany!" Wow. Now that they're committing atrocities in Belgium. They're less enthusiastic. <laughs> Let's play. Spot the French soldier. <laughs> what? Did you see him? <laughs> right. He's wearing a bright blue uniform with red trousers. And do you know who else spotted him easily too? The Germans. So when the French were slowly marching in columns through the countryside, the Germans easily tore them to shreds with their giant guns. All the nations involved in this war went in with an old school war mentality, and all of them had to update their uniforms and tactics a lot during the Great War. Because this war was going to be like nothing anyone had ever seen before. Russia's ready for war, and way earlier than expected. Hey, Austria Hungary, can you get on top of that? Oh yeah, sure, we've got this. Nope. <laughs> so Germany has to send some troops back to the east to defend against the Russians. The chief of staff of the Austro-Hungarian army is this guy, and although he is handsome, he turns out not to be the best military strategist. Austria-Hungary constantly ignores Germany's advice, and then comes running back to Germany whenever they get in trouble. Austria-Hungary even gets its ass kicked by tiny Serbia, who repels all their invasion attempts at the start of the war. It's better news for Germany in the north, though, where they almost completely wipe out the Russian second army. Back on the western front, the Germans continue advancing and are in sight of Paris. At this point, anyone would be forgiven inside for Paris. Oh God! To get that quick victory after all, but then things start to go wrong. The French commander-in-chief knew something had to be done, and he ordered his armies to stop retreating. In the resulting battle, a gap opened up in the German lines. If a gap opens up, the enemy can use it to flank you from the side and behind, so the German armies have to retreat. The Allies launch a counterattack, so the Germans dig into defensive positions. The Allies do the same. Then both sides move north. I remember learning about that. I don't remember the specific name. I remember. Oh, I, I remember learning about like the, the trenches. Oh, I forgot like the name. Is it like a specific day or something? To each Maybe other I'm completely the wrong there. When they reach the sea, they're in a stalemate with trench systems running the whole way from the Jeez, coast to the whole... Switzerland. The beginning of trench warfare on the Western Front. Here's how trench warfare works: two opposing lines of trenches with no man's land in between. That's the name I was thinking. the other with hundreds of thousands of artillery shells, sometimes for days at a time. This had a huge psychological effect on the soldiers, leaving many shell shock. Then the attacking troops would leave their trenches and rush across no man's land. Oh my god. A muddy wet mass of shell craters and barbed wire. The defending trench would unleash machine gun fire on the attackers, inflicting thousands of casualties. The attackers would send wave after wave until either they gave up or the opposing trench was what? finally overrun. There would be months of fighting and the deaths of thousands in order to gain a few meters or kilometers of land. Living in the trenches was hard work too. Corpses, mud that could swallow you whole, pools of poisonous water, rats, disease, oh my smell. Geez. It's insane that millions of soldiers put up with these conditions and commanders ordered them to do so for years. My god. So I do remember learning about trenches, but like I didn't really realize how sort of devastating they were like the sort of conditions that they were and I, I assume like in winter because again they did it for a long time so like in a oh, winter it's going to be a lot worse because it's just going to be so cold and all these things man but then even like when it's a hot as well like you're probably just going to be sweating and just like, say sweating as if that's the worst thing but like just like that's probably going to attract bacteria and like rats etc so my god man and this is just part one I mean Jesus I don't know how he put so much into such a short video. He's such an insane YouTuber, man. Imagine being the driver who accidentally took a wrong turn, basically being responsible for two world wars. That's the craziest thing, man. Him deciding to go back out is what led to it. Fuck's sake. This is the beginning of a legend. So is this one of his earlier videos then? Watching Oversimplified? Oh, is it his first one? There's a text. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Don't lie, you've watched this more than once. World War One in a nutshell. So basically, France and the UK declared war on Germany for declaring war on Russia for declaring war on Austro-Hungarian Empire for declaring war on Serbia. Oh man! So basically, everyone's just trying to back their boys. <laughs> it's literally just it. But yeah, man. I mean, part two. I'm gonna react to part two straight after this. But I'm gonna obviously do different videos. I'm interested to see. I mean, you, the US is here, so I'm interested to see how they get involved and to see like how, because again, they're neutral and they want. They don't really want a war, basically. So I'm interested to see what they do and how they sort of deal with it, man. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction and 
again, thanks for the support. Wild, wild support. And I just can't thank you guys enough for that. But hopefully it continues. And we're going to keep up with more of these historical reactions. But without further ado, like, subscribe. Peace.